Well, good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to Fortinet Live. I'm Robert Schott, the Vice President of Global Training and Global uh, Field Enablement here at Fortinet. And today I have uh, Trevor Park, Senior Director of Security Solutions at Comcast uh, Business, joining us to uh, discuss uh, cyber hygiene and best practices as we uh, get towards the end of Cybersecurity Awareness Month. Uh, glad you could join me here today, Trevor. Thanks, Rob. My favorite month. Hey. Yeah, can you, you know, before we get into talking about uh, best practices and so on, as, as we often do on these uh, these interviews, can you start off by giving us a little bit about your own career path in cybersecurity and, and how that evolved? Sure. Uh, I first dip my toes uh, into the world of cybersecurity with a security startup back in 2001. I started working as a tier one security analyst and kind of worked my ranks, worked my way through the ranks of uh, tier three. This led to various other roles, such as penetration testing. I managed a security operations center. I designed solutions to help companies reduce their cyber risk and improve their overall cyber uh, security posture. Currently, I lead a team here at uh, Comcast Business. Uh, we're advanced security specialists. We work really close with both customers and partners to help identify and close security gaps within the hybrid work environments that we're all living in today. I'm very passionate about staying connected with all things cybersecurity. I really enjoy the challenge of keeping up with um, anything new and interesting and all the threats that we see out there every single day. Yeah, so, sounds like a great, uh, a great uh, role to be in. You know, as, as we, uh, you know, as we start to wrap up Cybersecurity Month, you know, it's, you know, when we talk about cybersecurity, we often talk about, uh, you know, people, processes and technology. And with Cybersecurity Awareness Month, we really focus in on the people side of things. And it's important that, uh, you know, we obviously focus on behavioral best practices and so on within cybersecurity uh, during Awareness Month. And, and you know, we, we, we really focus in on how, how we can help people embed cybersecurity uh, behaviors into their day to day. So from your perspective, I mean, you see this from a lot of different angles and perspectives. What would you say are, are three important uh, cyber hygiene best practices that, that everyone, not just people that have cybersecurity in their job titles, but how everyone uh, could uh, you know, embed cybersecurity best practices in their day-to-day -day, uh, work life? That's a really good question. I, I get this exact question from both friends and family and even coworkers. I work with a lot of the salespeople and they're always messaging me things. You know, what should be done to ensure we aren't an easy target for hackers? I mean, look, it's really important to understand, you know, the behavior aspect. As humans, we are the most targeted threat vector for attackers and we will always be the weakest link in any cyber defense strategy, which as you know, you know, you're only as strong as your weakest link. So here are my three things or top three things that I think everyone should do to help prevent yourself from being the next cyber victim. So number one is, this is the most bang for the buck, I think, um, to increase your cyber protection is turn on multi-factor authentication. Activate MFA for every single account that you have that supports it. Multi-factor adds an extra layer of security by requir uh, requiring a second form of identification, such as a fingerprint, you know, some biometrics, maybe a code sent to your phone, or you use a authentic authentication app. It's been reported that over 90% of data breaches come from accounts that don't have MFA activated. So it's really, really important. Number two, and this one doesn't really get talked about as much as I think it should. You know, as long as software exists, this means software updates will also exist because humans write code, and that often means bugs are in code, which there will always be zero-day vulnerabilities, aka bugs in software, which will get attacked as a result. So thus, it's really, really critical to keep your software up to date for all of your devices, your phones, your tablets, your computers, whatever you may have. Attackers love to exploit vulnerabilities in unpatched software. Um, this gives them a way to gain unauthorized access, which leads to ransomware and other compromises. So whether you're just hitting the update button on your browser or your computer, whatever the case may be, always keep your software updated. It'll give you a leg up on not being that low hanging fruit. And number three, my final tip, um, think 
before you click on any link or act on any message you might receive. This might seem obvious, but if there's a sense of urgency around that message, especially, you know, you sh you're, your red flags should go up, alarms should be going off in your head. Attackers often use a sense of urgency to get an emotional response from their victim, which often leads to a quick compromise. Social engineering attacks are really gaining lots of traction with ChatGPT and other generative AI tools out there, making this threat vector more viable than it ever has been before. So my best advice to you, anytime you get a communication via SMS, email, um, or otherwise, have a voice conversation with the person sending you the request. Trust to verify the legitimacy of the ask before doing anything at all. So there you go. Those are my best practices to help protect yourself from you know, the most attack threat vectors out there. Yeah, yeah, th th those are great tips, and you know, I I, I love the uh, you know the, the range of tips there that apply to anyone. You know, you don't have to yeah. be an engineer or a technical person to, to have a role in cybersecurity. You know, I think it's it's everyone's role. And and your point about uh, you know people being the weakest link. You know, I, I think if we if we provide training and provide awareness, you know, we can you know, we can turn that around and turn people from the weakest link into, you know, our strongest defense. Uh, you know, the, um, obviously part of the challenge is getting this awareness out there. And, uh, you know, one thing that I do want to mention is you know, at Fortinet, we, we've launched a security awareness uh, service offering. And this is an offering that, you know, it, it goes well beyond training. It's, it's training, it's a platform to get cybersecurity awareness out into your organization you know, me measure the impacts and so on. Uh, and in fact, it's free for small businesses, it's free for schools and so on. So, you know, I'd really encourage people to take a look at that if you really want to get some of these best practices, uh, you know, to become part of your, your culture within your organization. Uh, you know, changing things a little bit here in terms of the, you know, the, the challenge. Uh, you know, in addition to awareness and best practices and so on, Organizations obviously are faced with a skill shortage around cyber right now. Uh, there's various reports out and, you know, the, the number that, that's often quoted is 3.4 million professionals that need to be hired right now to, to close the cybersecurity skills gap. Uh, I, I'm sure you're dealing with that all the time and I'm sure you hear that from partners and customers. Uh, do you have any advice that you'd give to you know, HR organizations, you know, hi hiring organizations as well as hiring managers and so on uh, around, you know, looking for people uh, and also for people that are considering careers moving, possibly moving into a cyber role. Uh, any any advice that you'd provide? Yeah, that's a, this is a big challenge. It's been around for quite some time and I don't think it's getting better anytime soon. I mean, the the closest thing to an easy button for hiring in general is really, in my opinion, as it pertains to cybersecurity specifically, is you know, it's it's really focused more around partnering with organizations that can help you know improve your cyber cybersecurity posture, not just targeting individuals, such as the MSSP, Managed Security Service Provider. Um, they have an expertise. Look for, for partners like that that can actually help um, extend the security knowledge of your environment. These, these companies, these MSSPs, they have specialties in the tools that the companies are using to protect their environments. Those are actually the easy button for protecting an organization. They'll be the most cost-effective companies tackling the cyber skill shortage, and uh, it'll help actually help your IT team be more efficient and proficient with their own day-to-day. -day. They don't have to learn as much, and they don't have to train as much. They can actually use that. I know Fortinet leverages a lot of training for MSSPs out there. So it's a nice, a nice mix where both sides can, can benefit from that type of uh, relationship. And if you're interested in getting, you know, kickstarting your career a little bit, maybe getting into the cybersecurity, if you're more newer, even if you're, uh, you're trying to do a career change, I typically recommend, you know, first of all, never stop learning. It's really important for me personally. I'm always looking to look get a little better because you can always get better. Stay up to date with the latest trends and technology. Cybersecurity is a very broad field. Choose an area of focus that really interests you, that really kind of piques your, your interest. Use webinars such as this one. Use some of the trainings that are available out there uh, to keep dialed into the entire InfoSec industry. 
and build your network of friends and colleagues to stay informed about what is actually out there. And you know, I typically recommend people reaching out to um, MSSPs to get that entry level job, that tier one, uh, and you kind of grow your career from there. But at a high level, I think the easy button is an MSSP organizations uh, as a whole. Yeah, I, I guess from that perspective, the the MSSP easy button, you know, the message there is, you know, you don't have to do this on your own. There, there, there's lots of yeah. help out there. Uh, you know, definitely echo your comments as well on on how broad the cyber industry is. And, you know, there, we've, we've really, this industry has really evolved from an industry of, you know, just engineering professionals to a very broad range is this. I think there is this perception that to get into cybersecurity, you need to be a computer science person or or an engineer. But there's there's a lot of roles that go well yeah. beyond that in terms of you know secops, you know policy, uh, all of those uh, types of, of of aspects as well. So a lot of different uh, opportunities I think for people that are considering career change. Uh, listen, Trevor, I want to thank you again for taking the time and, and sharing your thoughts with us today. Uh, you know, we're obviously getting close to the end of cyber, uh, cyber security awareness month. I really appreciate you taking the time. Uh, for those of you tuning in, really encourage you uh, to uh, take a look at uh, all of the, uh, the, the, the training and resources that are available on the Fortinet Training Institute, uh, whether you're considering a career move into cybersecurity or an existing uh, cybersecurity professional. As Trevor mentioned, you know, if you're in this field, You've chosen a field that involves lifelong learning, and uh, we have a, an awful lot of free resources, uh, training resources, uh, career development resources, and so on. So take a look at uh, Fortinet.com and the Training Institute and see if uh, see what's there for you. And thanks a lot for your time, Trevor. Thanks, everyone, for joining us today.